I'm Ronald. I'm Duran. So I had this argument um, with this lady about student loans. OK. And, you know, like I said, I don't mind paying my my loans back. OK. It's just the fact that they're ridiculous. Yeah. You know, they expect that you should pay a house note that's probably seven hundred thousand dollars where when you only owe maybe sixty thousand and they expect you to pay like four thousand a month, uh, maybe five thousand a month. I'm like, that's that's pretty much if maybe somebody's house note, somebody that got really a lot of money. And me, I'm like, I don't like just because even if I make a lot of money, it don't add up to equate to me paying that much a month and then having to pay all my other bills and trying to survive. But then not only that, having an another loan that I got for my bachelor's, which is a lot better because as we talked about before, me going to that trade school, they fucked me over. They robbed a lot of people, but I can't get out of it. They will not give me anything to get out of it. And I know that they said they were going to uh, forgive, but I haven't got any notice, no letters, no nothing on whether that stuff is forgiven. I know they're not going to forgive the private loans, but I have no notice or nothing. So my Cleveland State loan, which is the better one, which is only worth $40,000, where my other loan's worth 60000 plus, ridiculous for an associate degree that I can't use. But- I'm having this argument with her. She's like, you guys should, you know, I paid mine back and blah, blah, blah. And you should do the same. And I don't think you should do that. I said, but wouldn't you like to still have had somebody pay you, pay your loan if you had the chance just because you had the 10 years that you was out of school to pay it off? And that's what you did. And you don't even have a car. You don't have nothing. And you paid it off. That's great. You can't even really live. Right. And maybe some people have. Maybe they make they see level. Maybe they make a lot of money and they can do that. Who knows? But however, not everybody can afford to do that. So I'm like, does it matter if you paid off your loans or not? If you did, great. For other people and millions of people who are struggling through debt, especially now with everything being so high, everything inflated and all that stuff, wouldn't it be great for them to get some help? He ain't even say he was going to wipe away their whole loan. He said, I'll wipe away, you know, he's going to 10000 10000 That's right. That's right. You know, <clears throat> so they still got to pay it, still got to pay the rest back. So what is everybody complaining about? And she couldn't answer that, but I was just like, they're still paying it. Just everybody needs help. Even the people that so-called complaining about it, they need help. So when you when I asked her that, she literally couldn't give, she just uh um, uh, but still you guys should have to pay. And I'm like, but we're still if I was getting it, I'm still paying it off. And I didn't he didn't say wipe away everything. Right. Now that might have people shaking in their boots, but <laughs> Okay, so I have actually, I have a lot of thoughts on this particular subject. First and foremost, I'm, I'm one of the people who paid off their student loans. But you're never going to hear me say, well, you shouldn't give, you shouldn't give this group or that group loan forgiveness or debt forgiveness. And I say this for a lot of reasons. And so too often what I hear amounts to the same thing that I heard with regard to hazing and things of that nature. People say, well, I had to do this, so you should have to do it too. No, because our society is supposed to advance. Just because you had to do things that weren't great and that you acknowledge weren't fair doesn't mean everyone else should have to do the same thing I, and, yeah. and it's actually gone backwards when my parents went to college college was very cheap you're talking like a few thousand dollars period and i'm sure people would say well but if you adjust for inflation i'm adjusting for inflation college used to be cheap it hasn't been cheap and that started because in the 1980s ronald reagan started pushing uh, tax reductions well again going back to that bleeding a turnip kind of deal if you are pushing tax reductions but at the same time you're increasing military spending which is what he did you have to pull those uh, that deficit from somewhere and that's where they started pulling it from was education. And they have been using education and things like construction 
as a piggy bank for some time, pulling more and more money. That's part of the reason why our roads are so bad, is they pull all the money out of roads and education. So colleges don't get funded by the states the way, the way they used to. When I was in Colorado, that funding was drying up so much that they were talking about really increasing the tuition rate. I don't know if they did or not, but where... The other solution that you'll see these universities do to try to get more money is they take in more international students and uh, non-residents. And they do that because they can charge them a separate rate, a much higher rate, and that rate can be near arbitrary. All right, so what you wind up seeing instead is a drop off in the number of people from the state who are allowed to go and or a dilution by putting more people into the program. That's not the answer. We need to actually put more money into the education system so that colleges, public colleges cost less. Why does Ohio State cost so much? I don't, I don't know. It's not even a great school. Uh, it's not. Uh, okay, well, if that's the case, uh, why does Case cost so much? Why does Case cost so much? That's and also I, not a great school. I know. They make it seem like it's a pre prestigious school like, you know, Harvard, but it's not that great. And uh, mm -hmm. trust me, I've been to some of their programs and it's not as good as you think. Yeah. So uh, You're exactly right. And, and we can look at a lot of state schools and because of funding shortfalls, budget shortfalls, they're not what they used to be. You pay more in tuition for less. Why, why can't we fix this? Why is it we instead sit there and say, it's, it's part of the rites of passage. I had to sit there and pay a, a $100,000 loan to it when I went to a public school. So you should have to. Penn State. Penn State's expensive. A lot of mm -hmm. these schools are. Why? I, I don't know. They, you know, I just feel like people are getting greedy. They you are. Know, with all of the things that are going up, they say, like, oh, we can get more money for this. Like, the reason why I went to Cleveland State was because it was the cheapest around. Their credit hour was cheap compared to Case, uh, you know, Ohio State. And uh, what is it? Another school, Central State. Something like that. And all of these different stuff, Cincinnati, all of them. I was like, no, you're going to stay here. I'll go there. I'll get this. I think it was like at the time, maybe 300, maybe almost close to the 200, 300 credit hour. Then it kind of went up by the time I was leaving. Um, but it was cheap. And I ended up only owing about 40 grand. That that was a pretty good deal. Now, what I got back in that is, yes, to me, it's still not the greatest of the school, but it was be it offered better things than the case Western Reserve did. And some of the teachers there were way better, even for the lower cost and the shittier value. However, there were also some teachers that wasn't that good. So it's like you got a mix when you're dealing with stuff like that and these schools are putting up the rate. They don't even have great teachers. You know, like, mm -hmm. why am I going and paying all this money? And your, your program sucks. Your teachers suck. A lot of them don't even know what they're doing. It's like they're just throwing in people, paying them and say, hey, put we here's the curriculum, follow it. You don't even have to know much. You know where a lot of the costs are coming from, too, though, is these schools spend ridiculous, obscene amounts of money on their sports programs in a lot of cases. Mm, That's yeah. also partially why when you look at it, you have the more prestigious their football team the more expensive the school. It's not the mm. more prestigious the, you know, uh, their college is, so the College of Natural Sciences, the College of Engineering. No, 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 no. It's not that. It's the more prestigious the football team, the more expensive the school, because they pump more money into their football team, and that's what your tuition is paying for. We don't even have a foot. We didn't have a football team. We only had a basketball team. So maybe they was prestigious. And I don't think they was prestigious. <laughs> Cleveland <laughs> State University basketball team. We ain't made it nowhere. So, but don't get me wrong. I'm a Cleveland Stater, whatever. But I'm just saying uh, we didn't make it anywhere. We didn't have a football team. I think the best we had was soccer. Okay. You know, but even then, like, 
Mm. Maybe that's why it wasn't so high at a credit hour. Maybe. I still think they could have went down a little even more. I, I still feel like it could have been lower than that. So I'm glad that some people who have ridiculous debt are getting some of that forgiven. But I would like to see, instead of forgiving debt, we reduce the actual cost because what he is doing is covering the symptoms. It's like if you are violently ill and all you do is you go out and you get cough syrup to suppress your cold. That doesn't get rid of your cold. You're just covering up symptoms. Let's actually fix the root of the problem. The root of the problem being the fact that colleges are too expensive. Public colleges are too expensive and the quality of education you know, it's a little waffly. It depends on where you go. Let's fix those two things. We can do that. I want to add something else. Let's fix some more things with this system because they not only that is messed up, it's that the borrower's system is horrible. Yes. Like the way they rate out things and do things, that is even higher. If I have to borrow and loan from somebody and it may not be the government, it may be a third party, then the the system they have is it's like their harassment. It's like an harassing thing. It's like a loan shark. Okay, I get that. They want you to pay their money back, but it should be affordable for you to pay back. You know, it shouldn't be, hey, here's what we're going to set it to. Here's the interest, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be $4,000, you know, a, a month. It's not even affordable, like for people that are not doing an income driven repayment plan. And if you are doing income driven repayment plan, then guess what? If you make more than what you should, then they're going to still charge you as much as they think they should, you should be on. It should not be that way. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like that's just something that we need to fix. Like if you want to make things affordable, you know, I still feel like, you know, okay, we can't, you can't just let them like everybody pick everything they want, what they can do and what they can pay, but it should be made affordable and what they can pay when they get out of college, especially when, you know, they're just getting out of college. Most of these people don't even have a job and some of them don't get a job for some years, like a steady job. Yeah. I know people that still don't even have a good job or people that got their degree and don't make enough money to even feed themselves. Like, yeah. come on, man. Like I think that my sister has, as we talked about is, you know, a psychologist. Uh, that's what she got her degree in sociology and all of that stuff. And, dual majors and all of these different things and art therapy and stuff like that. She got her master's degree, all that stuff, right? Owing a hundred thousand and more. Okay. And she works as, I want to say she works as a psychiatrist or something like that, but I think she's more like a social worker um, in, in that case. But either way, she did all of this and only makes $50,000 a year. That is, doesn't make any sense. Now, I know how that, you know, that field is different than our field per se, but it's just like, wow, you went and did all that. You spent so much money or stuff you got to pay back. They're already harassing you. The rates are up like crazy. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't afford to pay any of that. And you only make $50,000. And even if you made a $100,000 in this day and age, it still ain't worth shit. Okay. In my opinion. All right, so your comment about the the private loan industry, that one's really funny. I don't, I don't know when it started, but I do know that the federal government's student loan program is insufficient. What I'm talking about is, so again, my entire debt load from college was thirty thousand, so three zero. I still had to get a student loan from a private company. Actually, it was from Wells Fargo in order to cover some of that because I couldn't get enough federal student loans to cover thirty thousand. And I think, I think the private loan was something like seven thousand. So I think the federal government would cover twenty three, and then Wells Fargo covered seven. I don't understand why that is, but what made it even worse was I actually paid off Wells Fargo first and I paid both as I was going through college, but I paid off Wells Fargo first because I know to your point how the private student loan industry is, they're loan sharks. And 
after I paid off Wells Fargo, Obama came into office and I'm paying on that federal loan every single month. I didn't defer it at all. And you actually should try not to defer it because when you defer it, the interest continues to accrue. So you just get more and more debt. But I went through and was paying as I normally did. And Obama actually signed a bill that took my federal student loan and effectively sold it to a private company, MOLA. I think it's what is called M-O-H-E-L-A. And they sat there and I mean, it was nothing but games with them. I know my one of my sisters, she had loans from Sally Mae. And of course, yeah. <laughs> so you tell, talk about yours with Navient. Sally Mae, talk about predatory. You'd sit there and you'd pay it and they wouldn't credit it. They wouldn't credit it at all. Yeah, that's what I have. It's because mine was with Sally Mae first. Mm -hmm. Then it went to uh, Neviant and um, stuff like that. And now that I was with Cleveland State, I had Great Lakes. And then they went to Nailnet. And I'm like, that's not even better than Neviant. You know, so like I am just in a pickle here where I'm just like, I cannot wait, but I'm never going to get out of it. Right. You know, it's fast enough unless I get a, a lot of money. And if I was blessed to get a lot of money, I would just pay them things off and be done with it. But I don't have much problem with the the 39,000. I think it's at 39, maybe 38 now. Uh, but I don't have much problem with that one because I think that's all like federal. Uh, I, I think any other loan, it was probably with Neviant. It's probably there that I, I, I probably paid that one off already. I think majority of it was federal anyway. Yeah. Um, so they give me a steady rate. And it stays that way. Doesn't go up. Doesn't go anywhere. With uh, you know, with Neviant, it seems like yes, I have a federal loan with them, but it's always going up, and I'm not understanding it. And then they they you know they private loan. Every time I turn around is up, so I have to kind of get in a plan with them because I'm like it doesn't make sense. You know, like I can't can nobody can I can't afford that. Yeah, I'm not gonna afford to pay that, and I got to pay my other bills. And imagine if you got a nice house and you got to pay it. Like some people tell you, don't worry about getting none of these things. Pay off your loans first. But what if you like a hundred thousand or more in debt? Like how are you gonna ever pay that off and be able to live? What are you gonna live in a and like and on the streets? <laughs> you know, and then go to work. Be maybe maybe you live in the um U-Haul truck and then you go to work. <laughs> And, you know, do your thing and then come back to the U-Haul truck. I mean, how are you supposed to live? They don't account for that. You're supposed to get picked up by Google, who never lets you go home anyway, and makes you sleep in your office. There's, they need to fix a lot of things with the system, the education system, our public education, mm -hmm. uh, even our kids' schooling education. Yes. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed, but they're poor. They're taking all this money and doing everything else with it, but not fixing our streets, not fixing our education, not fixing the, our kids' education, not fixing shit. You know, I feel like I just bought you. You just buy a car, you drive down the street, and next thing you know, you taking your car to, to get get it fixed because you ran through so many bumps. It might not be like that in Avon, but it's definitely like that over here and you know the what the other areas. So yeah, every Every time you move is a pothole. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's you're exactly right. There are a lot of roads that really need it. And that goes back to so the problem is people stopped wanting to pay taxes and they said, oh, well, our tax rate is already too high. Our tax rate is already too high. So the federal government has cut the taxes. When the federal government cut the taxes, the states had to pick up the slack. Well, then the states got pressure and they started having to cut taxes. So the states then cut their taxes and the local governments had to pick up the slack because somebody has to pay for your roads. Somebody has to pay for your child's education. Yeah, that you know what? When I think about the tax system, I really don't like it. But when you think about how they do how they do it in order to pay and build everything, it's just it's just crazy. Like without it. How would we like how would we get things paid and done without taxes? Right. Like what would be a better system to help do that? Because if nobody paid taxes, it probably would be 10 times worse than what it is now. You know what I mean? Like not even just a little bit. 
you right. know, if there was no tax on anything. But, but so to your point, imagine a poor place. So a rural community, for example, or some poor inner city area. They don't have the income. They don't have the money. So they can't fix the roads, etc. themselves. Do they not get roads? That's what would happen in that situation. They wouldn't get roads. And that's why it used to be that a lot of that money was coming from the states and the federal governments, because then they can take all that wealth and they can distribute it so that your places in Appalachia actually get meaningful access to roads. And that's important because they contribute absolutely positively vital resources to our economy. You're talking about food, for example, logging, oil and natural gas, whole host of things are provided by these communities that don't have a lot of money because they don't have a lot of people or because people just don't have a lot of high paying jobs. And if you're a wealthy person, well, you're getting all these great resources at a bargain because the government is paying for the roads. The government is paying for the sanitation and schooling and electricity and, and things of that nature in those areas. Yeah, it's 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 insane. Like, I don't know, like it's kind of like, you know, you got to have a happy medium in life. So, you know, you're not going to like everything, but you kind of have to be OK with whatever you kind of get, because it's like what, like I said, what would we do without if we didn't pay taxes, we wouldn't get anything like you said. Mm -hmm. So we would be in a worse conditions that we are, you know, than we are in now. So it's 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 insane. But to another thing, I mean, we can talk about this. You know, before, well, actually, before we go there, so, and your thoughts, the so way to fix the student loan thing is to, one, you know, make the cost of education cheaper, correct? Yes. And what was the second one? So after you've driven down the cost of education and increased the actual quality, which is absolutely important, and you can do both simultaneously, you also probably should do something about the current student loan issues because yes, so the, we, we can't just keep doing this. Oh, well, we're going to pay some portion of student debt because that doesn't actually fix the problem. But at the same time, if all we do is fix the problem, you still have millions of people, most of whom are actually older individuals. I feel like this is a big crisis and it's it's getting worse and worse and worse and no matter what people say and whether they paid it or not with all of the things we're going through and this being one of the biggest things as well it's going to get worse and worse and i see it becoming a big problem if we don't fix this right away which is probably not going to get fixed anytime soon ever and biden thinking that ten thousand dollars is going to make a difference no not really because guess what for most people like myself that interest rate is just still going to pile that 10000 right back on there. And then guess what? You know, you're still back in the same place where you were before. Uh, okay. Especially if you got higher interest rates. So I, I heard when all this came out, there were a lot of people. I hate this. I hate this so much. <laughs> there were a lot of people beyond the, oh, you shouldn't forgive it because I had to pay mine thing. I heard a lot of people say, well, you need to give more to minorities you need to give more to minorities because they have more student debt on average i don't like being treated like i'm a child or a victim you know I agree. and when i hear that i say so what you're telling me is i'm dumber than all of the white folk white folk because i'm so stupid that i got a huge amount of debt and they didn't. And I'm so lazy that I can't get a job that pays for it. That's what I hear when I hear that. And instead of, okay, because, so let's, let's look at this actually scientifically and statistically. All right. Most of the people today in college are women. Yep. And by a substantial margin. Oh, yeah. Most of the people today in college are oh, also women. white. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so most of the people with student debt are white women. Easy, easy logic to follow, right? 
Now, what they then do is they play the per capita game and they say, okay, well, yes, that's true. But per capita, this group has more debt. And I say, well, but why did you choose based on race? Did you choose based on race? Because when you looked at it based on sex, women were the ones that had less debt. So it didn't appeal to your target audience. Or did you choose race and then cherry pick because they cherry picked and specifically uh, Hispanics actually have less college debt than white people, white people. Hispanics are yeah. white, by the way. But I'm not about to say, ain't they the same thing? Yeah. The only difference is one says hola and the other says hello. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so, so you mean the Hispanics? See, I was always taught that they were uh mexicans and stuff like that but then after learning the truth is not true no 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 no. mexicans are latino there's if you guys feel that there's anything that you think about this what do you guys think about this leave it down in the comment section you know so we can discuss more about it if you like this episode and want to hear more from us about it please let us know i'm ronio i'm duran and to the next time have fun